morning, everyone. Uh, would like to um, begin uh, the uh, so committee as it will come to order. I want to welcome everybody here to the uh, mark. Uh, you have before you this morning the chairman's mark for FY 2018, the Agricultural, Rural Development, Food and Drug Administration and related agencies appropriations bill. The subcommittee's discretionary allocation is 20.001 billion, and this bill was written to that level. When adjusting for the Commodities Future Trading Commission, the discretionary spending for this bill is 1.1 billion below the uh, FY17 enacted level. When the subcommittee began its FY18 appropriations process, uh, we discussed with our colleagues uh, to keep in mind four guiding principles. Number one, to evaluate and account for taxpayer dollars to ensure effectiveness and accountability. Number two, invest in rural infrastructure as a catalyst for growth. Number three, ensure support for farmers, ranchers, and producers. And four, protect the health and safety of plants, people, and animals. Uh, these four principles guided us from the very uh, first review of the President's budget request to the content of the bill that is in front of us today. This basic framework helped us set the priorities. These principles also assisted us in providing context when we began to consider over 5,300 bill and report requests that was submitted by approximately 358 members. These requests covered every aspect of our bill and highlighted the importance of and the impact that the programs under this subcommittee's jurisdiction have on everyday lives of all Americans. We have tried to address uh, in this mark, um, the uh, request in a bipartisan manner by providing a programmatic funding or by including language in the bill or report in accordance with the House rules. The reality remains that as a country, we need to get our financial house in order and find a means to address our ever-growing deficit. However, this bill is not in full agreement with some of the budget proposals to def that def defund parts of rural development mission area or the food aid programs. Acknowledging a shared responsibility to find savings, this bill was thoughtfully crafted providing needed resources that will continue to support rural <coughs> America. This bill reflects my commitment to that. Only five accounts in the bill received an increase over the last year while the majority received significant reductions. These cuts have been targeted to make resources and make maximizing savings a priority. The bill supports family farmers, ranchers who are vital to our nation's economy and to its health and well-being. We are blessed to have such a diverse and plentiful food supply in this nation. We continue to help others around the world who face starvation and malnutrition. We support ranchers and development in agriculture, improve productivity and stability. We support the oversight of commodity markets, providing confidences for business, traders, investors, and the public. This bill provides funding for all USDA nutrition programs at levels that ensure all eligible participants will receive the assistance they need. We're very fortunate that we as a nation can support these vital programs. There are a few issues I'd like to highlight this morning that is in the bill. Uh, first, the, this bill includes a critical funding for rural development programs. I, like many of you uh, that are on this uh, subcommittee, come from a rural district. Uh, despite a difficult allocation and proposal in the President's budget to eliminate or drastically reduce funding for certain rural development programs, this bill includes funding for critical rural development programs, including water and wastewater loans and grant programs, several housing programs, including Section 502 direct loans for low-income buyers that were, that were proposed for elimination and resources for programs operated by the Rural Business Cooperative Service. Resources have also been provided to ensure all rental assistance contracts that serve very low-income residents will all be renewed as well. Second, this bill provides $2.8 billion to continue addressing critical research issues affecting agriculture, which will not only ensure our nation uh, has a stable and abundant food supply, but also maintains our country's competitiveness in the global marketplace. We do not support the proposed closure of 17 research facilities included in the budget request, but direct USDA to, to make research activities a, a priority and to re reallocate vital research dollars from research efforts that have matured or where the objective of the research have been met. The bill also provides continued investment in IRS buildings and facilities. Third, the bill provides targeted increases for animal and plants, pests, and diseases. In particular, we have maintained funding to help address the devastating effects of citrus greening 
as well as the crisis in the poultry industry as a result of the high path uh, avian influenza. The bill provides funding for the new Undersecretary of Trade and Foreign Agricultural Affairs and the Undersecretary for Farm Production and Conservation. <clears throat> the $1.6 billion for farm production and conservation mission areas ensure that local county farm service offices will be fully staffed and farm loan programs met current estimates of demand. The Trade and Foreign Agricultural Affairs mission area, that's something that I have supported since it was first proposed in the 2014 Farm Bill. It receives $1.8 billion in funding to promote U.S. agricultural exports, removes barriers of trade, to pro and provides U.S. commodities to those in need overseas through the Food for Peace and the McGovern Dole International Food for Education programs. The bill provides $248 million for the Commodities Future Trading Commission. This is a slight reduction. Uh, that is in line with nearly every agency in the bill, and the Commission was not exempted. This decrease is targeted toward the growth of overhead administrative staffing levels. Resources for the Office of Chief Economist, Enforcement, and Market Oversight functions have been a priority to ensure safe and sound financial markets. Furthermore, this bill provides a nearly $2.8 billion direct appropriations for the Food and Drug Administration to assist the FDA. Uh, this bill does not accept the proposed user fee recalibration. The bill continues to fund the food safety activities associated with the Food Safety Modernization Act, including the funds provided in the, in the base of the bill. Also, we have provided funding for USDA's extension service to serve as a sole educator at the farm level on the uh, FSMA regulations instead of FDA officials. $60 million is included in new funds for the 21st Century Cures legislation. The bill also includes several policy and oversight provisions to assist the new administration in peeling back overregulation. This includes a provision that requires the FDA to address tobacco products, including flavors and advertising targeting toward young children. Uh, in closing, I would ask uh, the uh, subcommittee's support for this bill. And at this time, I would like to recognize the ranking member, uh, Mr. Bishop, uh, for his opening remarks, and then we will turn to the distinguished chairman of the full committee, Mr. Friedland Heisen. So, Mr. Bishop, the floor is yours. Uh, thank you for yielding, Mr. Chairman. And as chairman, uh, Ms., uh, Mr. Adderholt, you have always set a cooperative tone, and I want to thank you uh, for continuing to be inclusive as we work through this process. Uh, I believe that. Uh, the chairman has worked very hard with very limited time and an even more limited allocation uh, to get us to this point. Uh, though the president's draconian request gave me severe concerns about what this bill will look like, I'm pleased that you've rejected so much of it outright uh, for the good of, of our country and our rural communities. Uh, first, the bill provides mandatory funding for SNAP, uh, otherwise known as food stamps, and child nutrition that is consistent with the current estimates. Uh, and it's done without including the onerous proposals put forth in the budget request. Uh, school kitchen grants are funded at $25 million. Uh, the administration's request had zeroed them out. Uh, WIC is funded at the request level, which is slightly below the FY17 level. But based upon uh, USDA current estimates, this level should not have any negative impact on the program. Uh, I was pleased to see that the bill provides $1.4 billion for Food for Peace, uh, which was zeroed out in the President's request. Uh, McGovern Dole is funded at $185 million. Uh, there was no funding for that in the request either. Uh, while both programs are below the FY17 level, they are far above zero, and I hope that we will be able to work to increase funding uh, for both as we uh, continue and go through this process. A major area of bipartisanship uh, is reflected in the fact that we did not abandon America's rural communities uh, as proposed in the White House budget request. Instead, we came together to ensure important improvements uh, to rural housing, rural water programs, uh, which were added uh, in this bill. Uh, while there are things to praise, Mr. Chairman, I do so in the context and the concern of a lower allocation and a presidential request that provided no leadership. The 2018 allocation is 5% lower, uh, $1.126 billion below the final 2017, 2017 number, resulting in funding reductions having to be spread across program accounts that make them less painful. However, our communities need these programs more than ever. 
and they need the necessary funding levels in order to be successful. Uh, therefore, I look forward to our making improvements to the bill before it becomes law. Uh, turning away from the bill for a second, Mr. Chairman, I'm disappointed uh, to point out that although it's the end of June, we still have no budget resolution, no top-line spending number, the debt limit is rapidly appro approaching, and we have no full list of the subcommittee allocations. Marking up just one bill at a time without a full list of allocations leaves us effectively working in the dark. Further, without a bipartisan budget deal, we'll be forced to cope with the real potential for a return of sequestration. Uh, this operational strategy results in an, in an inequitable distribution of funds This operational strategy results in an equitable distribution of funds between the defense and non-defense related accounts. Uh, while our defense related programs are vital to the nation, our non-defense accounts are equally important in providing for the least of these. If history proves correct, we are again in danger of having a broken appropriations process. And I'd be remiss if I didn't say that it would be unconscionable for any of us to help pass spending bills that shift burdens onto working families and the most vulnerable among us. Agreeing to subcommittee allocations bill by bill puts us at great danger of doing just that. Now, these markups represent our first step in a long process with a very limited amount of time. I look forward to continuing the cooperative relationship we have uh, and that we've developed uh, to address these issues moving forward in the appropriations process. So I thank you, Mr. Chairman, and I thank you to the staff, uh, both the majority and the minority, uh, for the uh, collegial and uh, uh, cooperative uh, spirit in working through this process. And with that, uh, Mr. Chairman, I yield back. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Mr. Bishop, and uh, thank you. Uh, it's a pleasure working with you uh, on this uh, subcommittee. Uh, two more people I want to recognize uh, that uh, were glad to be with us this morning. Uh, the full committee chairman, uh, Mr. Freeland Heisen, and uh, I'd like to recognize him for any comments he'd like to make. Right, th thank you, Mr. Chairman, and uh, my thanks to you and Mr. Bishop for uh, putting together a good bill. I, I know you've not been working in the dark, but one thing we know you've been working together, and, and that's important. Uh, and I want to thank the, the staff here for doing a remarkable job putting this bill together in a relatively uh, short period of time, a, a huge jurisdiction here crossing all sorts of uh, different industries, and uh, we're awfully appreciative of the bipartisan uh, effort here and the remarkable work of the staff. I'm going to exercise my prerogatives as chair to reserve the why more expansive remarks for the full committee, but having said that, uh, the safety and accessibility of our nation's food and drug supply is of utmost importance to our economy our families, our quality of life, and given the great benefit of producing what we consume here at home, national security. This bill prioritizes funding on federal programs that support these critical industries and the farmers, ranchers, medical professionals, and others that form the backbone of our food and drug supply, which I think we know is the best in the world. And I urge adoption uh, of your package. Yield back, thanks. Thank you, uh, Mr. Chairman. Uh, also, we have the uh, ranking member, Ms. Lowy. Glad to have you here this morning. I'd like to hear any comments you'd like to make about the bill. I think it's on now. Okay. Thank you very much. I'd like to thank Chairman Adaholt, Ranking Member Bishop, for your work on this bill. As we begin our fourth subcommittee markup, it is difficult to limit our discussion to how the Department of Agriculture, FDA, CFTC are being shortchanged. After all, today's markup is occurring concurrently with the House Budget Committee again failing to advance a budget resolution. So three months from the end of this fiscal year, there is no budget, no plan to address the inadequate spending caps or the harmful sequester. No strategy to raise the debt limit. At our full committee markups, the majority has not even proposed a full slate of 302B allocations. For the sake of our national security, 
schools, roads, bridges, clean air, water, and much more. The American people deserve more than this dysfunction. Republicans and Democrats will have to work together to raise budget caps if appropriation bills are to be enacted. Let's cut the charade. Let's get to work on a responsible bipartisan process. Now to the bill before us. The fiscal year 2018 agricultural bill would cut investments by $1.126 billion, or approximately 5%. The agricultural bill contains a number of national priorities, including healthy meals for children and the elderly, rural development, and the safety of our food supply, drugs, and medical devices. Unfortunately, some are shortchanged, including slashing food assistance to the world's needy by cutting Food for Peace by $200 million reducing McGovern Dole by $16 million, as well as continuing to disrespect the CFDC, which protects small businesses, family farms, ordinary investors from improper business dealings by including troubling bill language on employee compensation and a petty cut of $2 million from current levels, which is 33 0.5 million below the request of the Republican acting chairman. This bill also contains a host of problematic policy provisions, including wasteful federal funds for the FDA and USDA to advertise on GMO foods, continued efforts to weaken the FDA's oversight of tobacco products by exempting so-called premium cigars and dangerous e-cigarettes without congressionally directed pre-market review. The tobacco language in this bill is a Trojan horse. I urge my colleagues, listen to the science, not fall for this cynical attempt at deregulating tobacco products. And I want to assure you, I'll have more to say should this bill have a full committee markup. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, my colleagues. Thank you, uh, Ms. Louie. Um, I just want to, at this point to uh, see, uh, open it up for any discussion. Uh, any member wish to offer any amendments uh, to the measure before us? Yes, Ms. Laurel. I don't have technology. Uh, I, I don't have any, any amendments, but I wanted to ask about entertaining other statements. Is this a, a, the appropriate time? Yeah. Okay. Uh, thank you very, very much, uh, Mr. Chairman. First, let me acknowledge uh, Chairman Adderholt and Ranking Member Bishop's hard work uh, on the subcommittee bill. Having chaired the subcommittee in the past, uh, I know firsthand uh, the amount of work that it takes, so I thank you, uh, 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 sincerely thank both of you very much. Um, to begin with, I, I, I'm heartened to see uh, that report language that uh, I suggested uh, on, uh, is in the report. This is on lunch shaming. The practice of schools that are treating students with unpaid school lunch fee is cruelly and, emba uh, uh, cruelly and embarrassing them in front of their peers by throwing their lunches away, making them wear identifying stickers or bracelets, or putting them to work. We need to ensure that children are never punished uh, for their parents' financial situation, and that all of the communications about outstanding school lunch fees occur between the parents um, and the school. I'm also pleased to see language directing a report on what controls are in place to monitor water used in infant formula. Uh, this is the first line of defense uh, to prevent children from becoming victims of toxic poisoning, such as lead poisoning, um, which, as we all know, has lifelong uh, detrimental uh, consequences. I'm glad to see that the report supporting keeping the catfish inspection program at the U.S. Department of Agriculture, which does continuous inspection rather than just the 2 percent that is inspected by the Food and Drug Administration. Uh, the bill also 
uh, includes language that restricts the ability of Chinese chicken to end up on the plates of our school children. Uh, quite frankly, I'm very concerned about Americans consuming Chinese chicken, given China's history uh, with food safety, uh, especially now that the United States is moving forward with a rule allowing the importation of chicken raised and slaughtered in China, keeping in mind that right now there is an avian flu epidemic in China. Uh, and we are now moving forward to accept their uh, slaughtered chicken. In addition to that, uh, we have engaged with selling our beef abroad, which I understand, but as a quid pro quo, we are now going to accept processed chicken from China. And again, we have no ability to oversee what that process is in China before that product hits the United mm. States. Um, China has repeatedly faced serious challenges with weak enforcement of food safety laws and regulations, including problems specifically related to poultry products. However, with this language, uh, at least our children will be protected because they will not be uh, uh, able to uh, have this as part of our school lunch program. Pleased to see sufficient funding levels for domestic hunger programs, though I'm deeply concerned about the steep cuts to international food aid, including the $200 million um, from Food uh, for Peace uh, and $16 million from a governed doll. It begs the question about our humanity. Secretary Perdue said his motto was, quote, do right and feed everyone. Um, do those people suffering in famine overseas not count toward that goal? Uh, despite the good things in the bill, the bill is underfunded, 5% uh, cut below 2017, and it underfunds critical programs in a way that threatens the health of our citizens. We trust that the food we eat, the medications we take, and the medical devices we depend on have been evaluated with the utmost scrutiny by our government, and that our health and safety is its top priority. Of the institutions of our government, the FDA fulfills some of these most basic promises to American families. But today, the FDA is struggling to uphold these promises. We continue to add more responsibilities to their plate without increasing funding. We cannot do more with less. We can only do less with less. And given the utmost importance of the regulations under the FDA's purview, we must do more than what this bill provides. Flat funding uh, FDA, in my view, is irresponsible. I'm deeply troubled by the compounding language included in the report that would weaken and undermine the Drug Quality and Security Act, an already weak provision made weaker by this report language. <coughs> we cannot afford to lower standards for the compounding industry when the health and the safety of American families is at risk. This bill also codifies the Trump administration's goal to roll back school nutrition standards, and I believe there again uh, threatening the health of our kids. I'm concerned to see that the report maintains language that prevents the FDA from finalizing guidance on laboratory-developed tests which are currently unregulated. We all have heard horror stories about these tests giving false positives, resulting in patients receiving unnecessary treatment and surgeries. Given the movement on precision medicine, it is now even more important to finalize this guidance. I'm also concerned to see that this bill would change the so-called, quote, grandfather date to exempt many e-cigarettes and other tobacco products now on the market from an FDA product review requirement. The bill also contains language that will roll back FDA's ability to regulate premium and large cigars. Finally, the bill continues to underfund the Commodity Futures Trading uh, Commission. We should not undermine CFTC's ability to oversee risky market behaviors, protect consumers, and enforce the law by providing insufficient funding. This uh, will hamper the agency, leave it without the tools it needs to properly oversee massive commodities markets. Despite important reforms in some areas, in my view, the bill leaves large swaths of, general, of the general public at risk and vulnerable to food and drug safety threats. My hope is that we can re refocus on these priorities that this bill neglects as we move toward a full committee markup. Thank you very much, Mr. Chairman. And Mr. Thank you. Um, um,
Christmas, uh, Doro, uh, and let me just say re regarding the uh, the uh, school lunch shaming issue, thank you for calling our attention, and we're glad to include that language thank in there. Thank you. Appreciate that very, uh, very much. Bill. And uh, uh, so let me open up any other comments or discussion. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you. Uh, to the chair and the ranking member for all the work that you've done on this and to the staff of the committee and all of our personal staff who I know put a lot of time into getting all this done. I greatly appreciate that. And I do want to associate myself with the remarks of the ranking member Bishop and ranking member Lowy and uh, Representative Deloro. They have very comprehensively covered many of the concerns that I think uh, several of us share. So I will try to be brief with just a few more. Um, first, I really want to say how much I appreciate that the chair and ranking member um, basically ignored most of the cuts in the president's budget. Uh, so many vital programs that are important to rural America were zeroed out in those numbers. And I appreciate that you've used reasonable numbers um, to put together this budget. I'm sorry that we have $876 million in cuts, but that's a lot better than the $4 billion. Um, and I'm hoping some of those might be restored somewhere along the way. Just a few things that are of particular interest to me. I thank you for putting a million dollars into hops research because the future of the main economy is in beer. And we want to get that uh, hops growing back on the East Coast. Uh, lobsters and beer, you just can't go wrong. Um, and I do appreciate there's the report language in here on organic fraud and making sure the USD is fulfilling their oversight role. Increasingly, we're hearing more and more about that, and that's a very important um, role for the USDA in an emerging market that is growing all the time. Thank you for maintaining funding for the National Organic Program, Food Safety Outreach Program, School Meal Equipment Grants, which are also very important to many communities in my district. I'm grateful to see no cuts to conservation programs. Those are vitally important. And no language delaying the GYPSA rules or organic livestock rules. That's very helpful. Just a couple of funding cuts uh, on top of everything that you've already heard about. Um, one is on FSA loan levels, uh, specifically the direct operating loans and guaranteeing operating loans. Um, these are critical pots of money for farmers in my district, and I don't know where they're going to go if the money isn't there. Um, there are also some concerning cuts in rural development programs and some of the consolidation. Rural development investments in Maine totaled $402 million in FY16. They have a huge impact in a small state like mine. Um, and I'm just worried that if that funding isn't there, there's not a lot of other pockets of money to go to for states like our, most of ours. Um, the Rural Economic Infrastructure Account consolidates a few of the programs. I'm worried about how that might impact competitors of applications. Um, and while that's a small matter, it, it could have a huge impact, again, on the access of those funds. Uh, I also would have liked to see money go into the Healthy Food Financing Initiative, which is just getting off the ground at the USDA and receives no money in this bill. And I'm sorry to see that. Uh, lastly, I'm, I would like to see higher funding levels for SARE. Um, that was decreased to 24 million in this bill. Um, while that isn't as big of a decrease as was proposed by the president, our state has received about $5 million in SARE grants. Those are really wonderful opportunities for farmers uh, who have direct information of what's going on to do research and um, solve some of the weed pest and other problems that they're dealing with. So um, those are some of the maybe smaller programs to some, but critically important programs to rural communities and certainly many of the farmers I work with. And with that, again, I just want to thank you for the work that you're doing and look forward to continuing to work on this particular piece of legislation. Well, as I say, you know, we uh, we had to work with a smaller number this year, and so there were some programs that got cut that we would, uh, you know, like to see more, but uh, we had to work within our within our numbers. So uh, we, we understand there, there are going to be those issues. Um, anything else? Um, Mr. Pocan, our newest member on the committee. There you go. <laughs> thank you, Mr. Chairman. And uh, I just want to thank you and our ranking member and all of our staff uh, for putting together uh, a budget uh, under difficult circumstances. Um, batting cleanup, I'm not going to repeat everything. Uh, I will say I associate myself with uh, many of the comments uh, made. However, uh, I am very um, happy that uh, we didn't see the deep cuts that uh, we saw in the president's proposed budget. I think that would have been very, very detrimental. I think it's still difficult with some of the cuts that are there. Um, especially, I'm appreciative of some of the efforts uh, that will assist dairy farmers in my district and across the country. So I uh, really thank you for that. Um, I, I will echo, though, the SARE cuts uh, will have a big impact in my district for first-time farmers. So uh, that's one concern I have. 
And I think um, I will try to make sure that every uh, meeting I somehow find a way to bring up rural broadband. Uh, I think you know it's something that in a very bipartisan way affects all of us. But um, you know nowadays uh, you can't run your business without internet. Your farm business you can't track your cows and livestock without uh, internet. Uh, kids can't do the homework uh, without internet. And in uh, way too much of our country, about 20% of the people are. Uh, not having the type of internet they really need to function. I consider it uh, like electricity or water, and I think we need to have a higher priority on that, even at a time that we get tough budgets. I think we need to figure out a way, to, and I'm hoping that maybe as we move forward with this bill, there may be a way to, to look at that again. So uh, again, thank you for all your efforts. I appreciate it. Yeah, thank you. Thank you for mentioning the broadband. <laughs> that is an issue that really is a bipartisan issue, and we continue to look for ways to work on that, so that will be an issue. Uh, let me just, uh, let me just, anything else? Anybody else? Um, oh, I'd also like to just say a special thanks to the uh, majority and minority staff uh, on the subcommittee. Uh, they do a, do a great job in putting all this work together. Uh, the team led by Tom on, on the majority side and Martha on the minority side, and not to mention our personal staff that uh, does a lot of work to, to make this happen, to make sure we uh, move forward on this bill. So. Um, I think a big uh, thanks to all of them. Um, if there's no further discussion, uh, I'd like to recognize Mr. Valadeo for a motion to report the committee's mark to a full committee. Thank you, Chairman. I move that the bill be favorably reported to the full committee. All those in uh, favor of the motion say aye. 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 Those opposed, nay. Uh, and opinion of the chair, the uh, ayes have it. Uh, the uh, motion um, is agreed to. And um, I ask unanimous consent that staff be permitted to, to make technical and conforming changes to the measure just approved. Um, please ensure that the materials before you are returned to the subcommittee staff before you leave the room. And with that, the uh, subcommittee is adjourned. Those colors. Did you get that here in Italy? She wanted to post Paris. Yeah. That was a lot of conversation. Oh.